begin this video with a very simple question. How would you discriminate between an average answer and an excellent answer? How can you say that this student has written an average answer whereas this student's answer is excellent, it's perfect? I think that the only way you can discriminate two answers is by looking at the content. If an average answer is written by a student, he's going to write points which everybody else would also write. But a student who is writing an excellent answer, he's going to include certain points which no one else would write and that is why this teacher gives more marks to that student. In the last video, if you remember, I discussed a beautiful way in which you can write an introduction in your answers. So if you are preparing for graduation or post-graduation university exams, then this particular video series that I am doing will be extremely beneficial for you. In the last video lecture in this series, I discussed how you can write a perfect introduction irrespective of the question which is asked. In this particular video, I'm going to give you certain other points which you must include in your answer and these points are going to make your answer stand apart from rest of the students. So if you want to get those extra marks, if you want to become the university topper, then keep watching this video till the end. When you're preparing notes for your university exam, always make a paragraph where you inculcate a lot of intertextual references. Now, what are intertextual references? Suppose there's a question from Rhyme of Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Now, a person who writes an excellent answer would compare this particular work with a lot of other writers writing during the same age as Coleridge was. So, the student is going to compare it with Wordsworth Daffodil, Shelley's Ode, Keats, or to Gratian on and he's going to tell us how Rhyme of Ancient Mariner and other works written by other writers are similar as well as dissimilar at the same time. Since Rhyme of Ancient Mariner is a perfect example of supernatural poem, uh, the student can also compare it to Frankenstein written by Mary Shelley or Castle of Otranto written by Horace Walpole. Rhyme of Ancient Mariner is also a perfect example of ballad, so we can compare it to Oscar Wilde's Ballad of Reading Girl. So if you look at these works by mentioning these works and comparing Rhyme of Ancient Mariner with these works, the student can actually show how much knowledgeable he is and how his knowledge expands with other writers and in the domains of other literature. So, if you want to make your answer stand apart, always include a few intertextual references in your answer. And intertextual references doesn't mean that you have actually read the work as well. You can just read an introductory paragraph on reading a Ballad of Reading Gaol and then use a few lines to compare Ballad of Reading Gaol with Rhyme of Ancient Mariner. It's as simple as that. When you type on Google Rhyme of Ancient Mariner and you will automatically find that it has been compared to a lot of other works. You can just pick up those comparisons and include it in your answer to make your answer better than the rest of your classmates. In a good answer, the student would not only talk about other writers and works written by them, he's also going to include a lot of works written by the same writer. If the question is on Rhyme of Ancient Mariner, the student is also going to compare Rhyme of Ancient Mariner to works written by Coleridge himself. So we can take examples of Frost at Midnight, Kubla Khan, Two Wordsworth, we can even compare it to essays written by Coleridge, for example, Imagination and Fancy. And by giving all these references, we are actually showing how much we know the writer. And also important, uh, thing to remember here is that you can take a few lines from Frost at Midnight or uh, from Kubla Khan and then 
compare it to the lines written by Coleridge in Rhyme of Ancient Mariner. So in this way, you would be able to enhance your answers quality as well as you will be able to fill a lot more pages. If you'll keep on writing summary of Rhyme of Ancient Mariner, I'm pretty sure you'll run out of pages in three or four pages. You would not be able to expand your answer beyond three, four pages. But if you include all these things in your answer, you can keep on writing till eight or nine pages. So always include a paragraph in your answer where you talk about other works of the same writer. And this can actually make your answer extremely beautiful and the content of the writer would be appreciated a lot by the teachers. The next thing to include in your answer are quotations from the text which has been asked in the question. Uh, taking the same example of Rhyme of Ancient Mariner, make sure that when you're preparing notes for this particular work, you write down few important lines. Now that doesn't mean you need to read the entire poem. You can just type on Google important lines from Rhyme of Ancient Mariner and you'll get some really, really famous lines. You can make a note of all these lines, learn them and then highlight it while you're writing your answers because when you write your answers using these quotation marks you are actually telling the examiner that you have read the text and also it is going to make a very good impression on the examiner because a person who can remember lines means that he has actually read the text in detail he has read the text in so much detail and he has read it so many times that he is able to actually learn the lines though we have not done all these things but yet we can flaunt our um, hard work and we can flaunt our talent in front of the examiner so always include quotation marks make sure that quotations are highlighted so that they stand apart okay in your answer the examiner can find them easily so highlight it or make a new paragraph when you're writing a quotation or maybe you can just underline it do anything but just make sure that the examiner can easily see and locate quotations in your answer. Just like in the last video, I talked about how to write a perfect introduction. You can also incorporate a perfect ending, a perfect conclusion in your answer. And the best way to write a conclusion is to talk about critical comments on the particular writer. If you have a question on Dryden and you are summing the question uh, answer up, in that case, in the last paragraph, you can talk about all the other writers and what they have you know, mentioned about Dryden. For example, there's a beautiful quotation by Walter Scott. He said, Glorious John. He appreciated John Dryden by calling him Glorious John. Similarly, uh, we have Arnold who said that Dryden was master of Middle English, middle style of writing. And then we have Mr. Samuel Johnson who commented on Dryden telling that he found English as a brick and left it as a marble. So he has actually refined English so much. By using all these quotations towards the end of your answer and by telling the examiner that you know more uh, than what the syllabus boundaries allow you to do or your knowledge expands way beyond the uh, margins of the syllabus, you can actually get those extra points and you can actually become a topper of your university. So always conclude your answer by talking about critical comments of other writers on that particular writer. So by incorporating the four important topics that I have asked you uh, to incorporate in your answers, you can actually secure lot more marks than you would if you merely write summaries in your answers. So make sure that you make separate paragraphs or separate points for each of these things in your notes and you learn them up so that on the day of the exam, if you don't get any other thing to write, you can actually write all these things to elongate the length of your answer as well as to show the examiner how well you know the text. 
this video lecture series is going to continue because we have a lot of other things to tell you so that you can beautify your answer and can become a topper in your university so stay tuned to this particular channel if you have not subscribed then do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you are notified next time we post a video you can also uh, join us on all the social media platforms because we are running a free go net quiz for all our aspirants Apart from that, if you have not yet visited our website, it's time to check out arpitagarva.com because we are running a special online course for UGC NET English students. We have already given you the list of writers which you must study according to the new syllabus on our website. You can also find demo material, testimonial results of our previous students on the website. The link of the same is given in the description box below. We'll meet you soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature stay tuned to arpatakarva.com